What's up guys, I'm Chad Hoover and welcome to today's video where I'm in one of, no actually, I'm in the coolest kayak shop in the country talking about one of the most versatile fishing kayaks out there, the New Canoe Unlimited. All right guys, so the reason that I've made it over to Westbrook Supply is because I've been using this boat all year long and I've used it in a lot of different situations and I never quite figured out exactly how I wanted to rig it because just about the time I decided I wanted to rig it one way, I got on the internet and found somebody who had outfitted it a completely different way. So I called up my good buddy Fletch. Fletch, get on in here from over here in Hotlanta, Georgia at Westbrook Supply. This dude some, does some of the best rigging jobs in the country, one of the most innovative shops in the country. And so when I was having the conversation with him, I was like, look, man, I have a hard time articulating <laughs> exactly who this boat is designed for because I've used it without the front pod. I've used it with the front pod. I've scooted the seat all the way to the front. I've used it without a motor. I've used it with the motor. He was kind of like, yeah, dude, that's, um, that's, that's who the boat's designed for. Absolutely. So what's great about it is I used to be a shop owner. This guy talks to customers on a daily basis. So I wanted to bring him in on the conversation, one, because I want you guys to know about this shop. If you're anywhere within striking distance of Atlanta, you definitely need to come check his shop out. And if you want to get a boat custom rigged, he's the place to get it done. But also because when you talk to customers every day, you hear why, what, when, where, of a particular boat you get all the different ideas you help bring some of them to life you create some on your own so fletch talk to the folks that are watching this video that are maybe on the fence about the new canoe unlimited on the fence about fishing kayak in general what exactly this boat is designed for what, what customer does this boat appeal to and why if that makes sense yeah absolutely <clears throat> so uh basically we've got some basic questions we always ask customers when they come in and they're they know they want to kayak but they're not sure what they want uh, so the biggest thing is, you know, what, what are your goals for kayak, you know, kayaking or kayak fishing? Where do you want to fish? What type of water, flat water, moving water? Uh, and then, you know, what, what kind of versatility are you looking for? So immediately, uh, if a customer comes in and they say they're thinking about adding power to it, they want a trolling motor or something like that, I immediately walk them over to the new canoe section because these platforms are, you know, purpose built for adding power to it. It makes it very easy to do that. Uh, all the accessories, uh, that New Canoe provides for either doing bow mounts, transom mounts, gas motors, electric motors, trolling motors, whatever you want to do, uh, you can do that. If anyone says to me uh, they got a small kid or something like that, uh, they want to bring some family members with them, you know, take the wife out with them. Again, this boat has the capability of adding a, a full second swivel seat to it, so you can easily turn it into a tandem. Uh, sometimes that's a good sell. Sometimes you get somebody that says, well, I, I got to talk to my spouse about it, and they're really on board, and you know, but, you know, if the spouse kind of loses interest, it's still a good solo boat, right? right. So uh, you can sell it as a tandem, uh, but it's still a good solo boat. Um, and I'll be honest with you, man. Yeah. Like, I don't buy the spouse thing. So, look, if you want to stay married, do not buy a tandem well, fishing yeah, kayak. Yeah. I call tandem fishing kayaks divorce boats. Yeah. But literally one of the things that you brought to my attention when I said... I don't like tandems. You're like, well, not so much for the couple, but like if a guy wants to take his kid right. or if the mom wants to take a kid or something like that, or if two younger folks want it, that makes sense. You know what I mean? If you're looking at two smaller people, a father and a son, a mother, a daughter, a mother, a son, that, that makes sense. And I ended up running into a family at the boat ramp and the father, son were using it and that configuration. The, the father had the seat further in the back. The son had the seat up front. They were, he was facing towards him. They were bucket fishing with uh, live bait for crappy. Right, yeah. I saw them out on the water, they're having a good time. So that is definitely probably the strongest selling point, in my opinion, for this boat if you have uh, small children. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm gonna do real quick, guys, is I'm gonna keep Fletch right here by my side in case he has something to offer. We do have one of the most ridiculous New Canoe Unlimiteds I've ever seen <laughs> that we're gonna do a full walkthrough with Mike here in a second. And then I met up with uh, Tammy Sanchez at the Knucklehead Championship, and at the end of the video, we're going to let her walk you through her boat, basically the same boat, two completely different approaches to outfitting those boats, and that's what truly makes this boat unlimited. Now, for me, every time I hit a roadblock on rigging, I'd call this knucklehead up, and he'd be like, dude, just do this. And so let me kind of take you back here to the back of the boat, and I'm going to show you how I've set mine up, some of the things that I was undecided on. And we're actually giving this boat away as part of the Catch-22 Challenge, and we're going to leave it here at the shop. So you're going to be able to come to Westbrook Supply, and Fletch is going to basically help you get this thing dialed in for exactly the way that you want to fish it. So let's start at the back and just work our way to the front. All right, so one of the things right out of the gate that I was pleasantly surprised by with this boat is it actually paddles really well. Paddled way better than I thought it was for such a big boat. 
Part of that is because the seat, you can put it anywhere you want to. So if you trim the seat out right, and if you look at the cockpit, the sides are actually sloped out. So as, even with a bigger boat, when you get the right paddle stroke, you're going right down the side of the boat. Actually, because of the way that the hull is almost flat on the bottom, it doesn't have a lot of wetted surface. It's got a lot of volume. So even with bigger angler like myself, it keeps you up out of the water. It paddled extremely well, which means I procrastinated putting a, a motor on it for quite a while. Then I decided, you know what, I'm going to try outfitting this thing because you've got so much open space and so many different ways to configure it, I want to kind of play with all of them. So I got the new canoe motor mount kit and that goes with the Newport Vessels uh, NK300 or NK180. Put the 180 on it initially and it was good. It was just a little underpowered for the amount of gear that I'm carrying, how big I am and how far I wanted to go. So what I did is I put the NK300 on there. This thing is super powerful, Oh yeah. <laughs> super quiet. And what's cool about it is the, I've been putting motors on kayaks for as long, if not longer than anybody out there. And it was the best package out of the gate for everything that you need to install a motor on a fishing kayak that I've seen. So big shout out to those folks. Great job from Newport Vessels for putting those kits together. So I'm just going to run you through a couple of things. I'm not going to get into it because it is so simple. The only thing you really have to think about with the setup is when you put the new canoe motor mount on there, you do have to depin the connector, put the cable through and then put the connector back on. Sounds intimidating. All you do is press the pins down with a screwdriver, pop the connector off, run the wires through, put the connector back on. And uh, Fletch here at the shop even sells a better waterproof version of this cover for the Anderson connector. So if you come get your boat done here, he can actually juice you up with an even better uh, waterproof connection. Um, the folks there at uh, Newport Vessels also include a really long cable. So if you want to run the battery to a different part of the boat, if you want to change your load out, if you want to change your weight, one of the cool things about the new Kuno Unlimited is it's got this track that runs up and down the boat. So let's say you were doing that tandem configuration, you still wanted to use the motor, you could move your back seat to the back, put your battery in the middle, put your front seat at the front, or you could put your back seat back here, put your battery at the front, put your cooler in the middle, you really are <laughs> unlimited with the amount of stuff that you can do. Lots of variations on how you set this thing up, you know, whatever's going to work best for that scenario. And you're, and you're not locked into it. So, you know, if you're changing water, changing scenarios, it's very easy to reconfigure on the fly. So. And even though New Canoe is kind of like the app world where you need something, you go, there's an app for that. They literally have a kit for that. So if you want to do a motor mount, if you want to do a transducer mount, whatever you can think of, New Canoe has a kit for it. But even beyond that, companies like Yak Gadget and uh, 3D Yak and some of these other companies out there in Navarre have made risers for the seat to raise the seat up a little bit so you can get more gear underneath it. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about, because I saw quite a bit of discussion as a, like a con for the Newport Vessel is, yeah, but you have to have a 36 volt battery. Now, I did pick up the 3660. Uh, from the folks at Dakota Lithium, and that thing will run this battery for three full days of fishing. Mm -hmm. I haven't quite gone past three days because I got to the point where I was like, there's no way That's this thing's going to still run it. <laughs> but I ran it for three full days of fishing. You can take, you know, one of the new Dakota Lithium 12 volt 135s. You can put three of these in series. If you've got a 12 already, you can add this. If you've got the 24 already, you can add a 12. So you're not stuck with necessarily having to upgrade to a 36 volt battery and a lot of people think that that's one of the drawbacks now you do have to have 36 volts of battery so you do have to upgrade one way or the other but just something to think about if you already have a really nice 12 volt battery if you already have a nice 24 volt battery you don't have to buy right a second 36 volt battery you can serialize your batteries and get 36 volts out of it and to be honest with you when you do that you get real-time power you get the same amount of power as the lowest amp rating divided by two. I'm not gonna get into that. I could put the formula <laughs> in the description box. You got so much room on this boat, uh, it's not even funny. Coming on up to the front, the other cool thing about the track system is you've got the ability to put the, the, the throttles, uh, rod holders, anything you want, which you'll see on Mike's boat. But to be honest with you guys, what was really great about this boat is your rods will really just lay right down in that gunnel. If you're picking up a couple of rods, you've got your black pack in the back, um, I have pretty much found these flush mounts back here to be pretty much useless. And I think it's cool. One of the solutions that Fletch came up with um, on Mike's boat. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, one of the things that I did to tie my battery down is I use these Jack Attack vertical tie downs. But if the strap lines up properly where you're going to put your battery, there actually is a gap behind the track 
So in a lot of places, you can just put your tie down strap over the battery and you don't even need that yak attack strap. I just like that yak attack strap, vertical tie down and a strap so I can put the battery exactly where I want it. I wanna make it secure. Heaven forbid you flip the kayak. <laughs> you don't want the battery and cable it's and a lot all that of money stuff. To, you want that yeah. thing locked in and secured. Um, they're not gonna short out quickly, but if you let that thing submerged in water forever, it's probably gonna have a problem. So having that battery on there, that strap on there is a good insurance policy. So if something happens, you happen to flip your boat, you can get it back over and make sure that your battery is there. One thing I do wanna talk about that I loved when I first put it on the boat, then I fell out of love with it. And then when I talked to Mike about how he rigged his boat, I think I'm now back in love with it. And that is this, uh, this uh, transducer retractor setup. So I put this on my new canoe when I initially got it. You connect your transducer right here. Initially, they offered it with a kit for each brand. Now what they do is they sell it to you with all the different mounts for the manufacturer that you use. Then if you change the manufacturer, you don't have to buy a new mount. So that's a really smart thing that the folks at uh, New Canoe did. But there's this little plug that goes in there. You basically unscrew this plate off the top, take the handle, put it through the hole, run the handle through the bottom of the boat, just like this. And then you basically put it back on there, tighten it down, and your transducer cable comes right up through the center. The reason that I kind of fell out of love with this thing for a while, and when I was telling Mike about it, is, is that when you back up in the water, especially if there's any grass around, it has a tendency for stuff to you know, build up behind it and bind in there. Then you couldn't pull it up, so now your transducer's stuck in the down position. And uh, Mike showed me a really clever solution. And uh, that's why we came to Westbrook today, so we can show you those little clever solutions and so that I didn't just write this thing off, because I do think it is one of the cleanest, most clever ways for raising and lowering your transducer. I just got a little frustrated with it when I was backing up in the grass on Gunnersville. And uh, we'll show you how to fix that problem. So that thing right there is pretty slick. Moving on up to the front, the motor is steered with this unique gas pedal style mount. So basically what you do is instead of having to move both feet, you just steer it with one foot. Now, one thing that I will tell you that I didn't think of that you need to consider is the cable comes in three different lengths. There's like a short, right. a medium, and a long. And I ended up getting the medium cable in the beginning, which means I can only scoot my seat so far forward before now the pedal's too close to me. So what I would recommend is get your seat where you want it in the paddling position, outfit your boat before you order your the steering cable for the new canoe motor steering kit, because if you're like me and you order the one too short, then you have to go back and order the uh, the other cable, which you can do. You don't have to order the whole kit again, right? Yeah, you, you just can order get the cable. Just the individual cable. Just so the individual cable. If you're planning on switching between solo and tandem, you're probably going to want two, two cables, two different sizes, so you can move readjust that. But uh, real clever solution, real really well laid out. I also like the fact that New Canoe's got this integrated little pulley system. Uh, works great for me. Mike's going to have an actual. Uh, modification to that system on his boat, but you basically just pull up on this thing, it raises the motor up and there's a cleat right there to lock it in place. And then coming on further forward, I love this pod. I actually used it for my camera mount, I used it for throwing dry gear in, and I never fully got around to drilling holes in it because in the beginning I knew that I was gonna use this boat, I was gonna do a review of it, then I was gonna give it away to one of you knuckleheads. And the last thing that I wanted to do is to outfit this thing mm. the way I wanted it, and then you didn't like it that way. So you'll have the ability to make the new canoe unlimited, have still, still have unlimited potential. Um, one of the other clever things that new canoe does that we'll talk about on, when we get over to Mike's boat is the side handles are paddle holders. So from a paddle standpoint, it's one of the more clever paddle management systems out there on the market. And guys, for me, I didn't have to do a whole lot to this boat. I could actually throw a battery in the front kit, put my depth finder on the side, connect the transducer cable, which literally goes down through the hole. Everything was external. Didn't have to do anything fancy. Didn't have to modify anything. But uh, I also knew I was gonna be giving this boat away, so I didn't want to do a whole lot to it. But one cool thing about this boat, and you'll see it on Mike's boat, is uh, New Canoe has access panels built into the boat, and they even give you a couple of access panels with some of their kits, which allow you to replace those access panels if you've already drilled holes in them or done this thing or that with it, and then you can change it. So if you yeah. drill a hole in it and you make a mistake, you can just get a new plate and uh, re-outfit it. Or if you get ready to sell the boat, yeah, you want to pull your accessories easy, off, you just change easy. the plates yeah, out. put it back to stock. It's uh, just four screws and it's stock again. So that's really 
what it boiled down to for me with this boat. Here's what this boat excites me about. Uh, capacity, massive capacity. It's got a lot of capacity. In fact, 600 pound capacity, if you put the scupper plugs in, I'm not a big fan of relying on that capacity, especially if you get out and chop, you don't want your scupper plugs in because your scuppers are your drains. And I think a lot of people these days forget about that. The unlimited track, the adjustability of the seat is key for me. I'm not a big tandem guy. And the guy standing behind the camera over there is my son. That's the youngest one I've got. And me and him ain't getting in a boat together. So the tandem thing isn't a real big, 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 big bleh. So the tandem thing isn't a real big deal for me yet. Maybe when the they start popping out grandkids. Yeah, I'll it's, change yeah, my it's mind. Perfect for that. Yeah, but yeah. if that floats your boat, that's great. But for me, what I like about it is the fact that it is, you can rig it out to the to the nines like Mike's done, or you can keep it super simple. It paddles way better than I thought it did, and it motors really well. And it motors really well for two major reasons. And I want to talk about those before we move over to Mike's boat. Long, flat hull, volume carried almost all the way to the stern, so it planes really well. Mm -hmm and the combination of being able to trim the seat. So if you can trim the load and you can have the ability to have a flat hull, you're gonna get really good motor performance. And you'll see this when we do Tammy's boat at the end of this video, but it's actually one of the best boats on the market when it comes to the ability to perform really well with a stern mount and a bow mount. So with that, Fletch, do you have any final thoughts about things that I might've missed before we kick it over to Mike and let him talk about his purple people eater over here? Uh, well, I, I think he covered most of the basics there. I mean, the, the key with this is that vers versatility, you know, it's called the unlimited for a reason. Literally every unlimited we've ever rigged out or I see coming to the shop, someone has done something slightly different. And I think that's what's really unique. And, and the, the biggest challenge with these is when you see them at first glance, it seems like like it's kind of, I always say it's kind of like a blank slate, right? Um, it, it, but what that allows you to do is rig it out the way that works perfectly for you. There's no, no real baked in details or features. Uh, you can put those features where you want them. So whatever's going to work best for you, uh, you can make this boat that, uh, which I think is really unique in the space. Here's uh, how I explained it to somebody that asked me about this boat. If you're a really experienced kayak fisherman or you've seen a lot of fishing kayaks, you look at this boat and it's almost overwhelming because you can see all the possibilities. But if you're a new kayak angler and you're somebody that's never seen a fishing kayak and you look at it, it's almost underwhelming right, because right. it's so blank. But when you think about both th that in both contexts, it really can be underwhelming or it can be overwhelming. So let's get over here and take a look at Mike's boat that is dressed out to the nines. Stay tuned to the end of the video and we are going to uh, walk through Tammy Sanchez's boat, which is more of a bow mount setup and uh, really will truly show you between these two walkthroughs the, the, the unlimited possibilities of the new Canoe Unlimited. So anyway, let's turn it over to Mike. All right guys, so listen, before I turn it over to Mike to walk you through his boat, I wanted to point out that thing I was talking about, which is Yak Hobby makes this really nice little uh, back of the transducer protector type thing. It's what I love about the innovation in the kayak fishing game is people in the sport are constantly coming up with stuff like that. And then I just noticed that you've got, you've got an all these nuts. That, what? Okay, you guys will just have to check his sticker out in a minute. Mike, before I turn it over to you, I do yeah. want to comment about one thing about your boat though, bro. Yes. Like this is one of the cleanest setups I've seen yet, dude. Well, I appreciate it. I just did it for today. So. No, I mean like clean, like cleanliness wise. Do you even use this thing? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Before Sometimes. Before we started filming, he's like, oh, I washed it. And I was like, for this video, and he's like, yeah, I'm like, dude, you washed the mojo off. He's like, no, all the mojo's like up there in the right middle, in so. Juice. Anyway, juice. talk to him about your boat, bro. All right, well, thanks so much, Chad, for the welcoming introduction there. Um, starting from stirring the bow, uh, for my new canoe unlimited, I have the, the new canoe quick connect system that is pretty much holding the Newport NK300. Uh, of course, I have the custom pulley system here to pull that motor up from the front to back here. And then, of course, it's a foot steer uh, all the way to the front. And then you also have, in the back here, my Yak Attack sidearms that I have mounted to, you know, four total of uh, Mega Pro rod holders. Uh, that's how I run my rods, pretty much horizontal from the back and easy for me to turn around and grab it as well. Um, powering my NK300, I am running a 36 volt battery um, in the back as well. And of course, powering all that underneath, all my tackle goes underneath my seat which uh, is with the Yak Gadget Quad Flex box where I run, you know, I'm able to run four 3,700 boxes. And of course my, my live scope mount is mounted on here by a custom mount that I built with off of some Yak Attack products and, uh, you know, some 
other accessories that I put together. And then of course my throttle for my NK300 is mounted onto a Yak Gadget uh, Quick Pro Plus uh, quick track there. And then also here's my foot steer that I use to steer my trolling motor with. And then on the side pockets here, I like to run a 3700 for my ter terminal tackles. And then of course I have my catch board for when I measure fish. It's up in the front there, uh, tethered to a rogue leash. And then I also have the boondocks uh, center console here that I run um, connected to, to a Yak Attack mounts to rise it up a little bit uh, to run my screen on. And then of course, moving forward, I also have, I also have the, my gear pod that has my black box and my two 19 amp hour batteries that I control all my power and my lighting with as well. Um, so that's pretty much my new canoe built set up from head to toe. Um, other than that, I appreciate you guys and thank you. All right guys, I wanna thank you Mike for doing that cool walkthrough, even though Austin's really mad because I came in all off cue on the closing. But I did wanna talk about something real quick before we jump into Tammy's walkthrough so you guys can see a whole nother New Canoe Unlimited setup. What exactly is this stuff? Because uh, I read it yep. earlier, but I don't know that I even believed it. Is this real? It is. What is it's so tell, look at the camera and tell them with a straight face what this is. That is called bait pop. And that is a pretty much a live scope bait enhancer. <laughs> so it's like a man lip gloss that you can pour onto your lures <laughs> and enhance your live scope. So yes. <laughs> So you put this on your bait. Yeah. And it makes it pop more. Absolutely. Than already just showing well, it has, up. It has the, the tungsten, you know, sparkles on there. So it definitely reflects oh, so, back. So it's got tungsten fleck in it. Yes. Which makes it show up better on live scope. Absolutely. All right. So if you weren't already cheating enough, <laughs> just go ahead and get some of this. What is this called? Bait pop. Who makes this? Uh, Company bait. called Bait Pop? Yeah. Oh, we'll get yourself some bait pop. Yeah. The original fish formula, <laughs> bait pop. Hey, if live scope ain't good enough, if forward facing ain't good enough, throw yourself some bait pop on your bait and just get out there and put your head down and start fishing. <laughs> so anyway, right. <laughs> yeah, appreciate the walkthrough. And Absolutely. listen, guys, we're going to finish this video up by kicking it over to Tammy Sanchez from the Knucklehead Championship for a whole completely different walkthrough of another angle of rigging the New Canoe Unlimited. And uh, yeah, let's turn it over to Tammy. All right, guys, so this might be one of the most ridiculous setups of a new canoe unlimited that i've seen this is tammy so tammy do me a favor give me a walk through kind of bow to stern if you don't mind of you know all the various things you've got set up on your new canoe unlimited okay. i'll come around the other side let's see if i can remember everything <laughs> so i have the motor guide xi3 gps spot lock up in front which i don't have on but it's here it's right there yeah um I have the point one GPS up on top. Inside the gear pod, I have my batteries, my enduro power runs my graphs, my dual graphs, plus the lights in front, my nav lights in front. Um, I have two Lorenz HDS nines, um, one with active target, which I use here. Um, I have the Sniper Marine Pole, um, which has a connection here that I got from Sniper Marine Pole. It's just magnetic. You remove these and this pops right off. I've got it attached to a Yak Gadget dashboard. I guess. I'm not sure it's what it's called, not the dashboard, but um, then I've got the seat. around here the seat I have my yak my kayak cushion um, I've added some accessories on the side one has a cup holder which I have my light in and some lures that I throw in um, on the other side I have my yak attack pack the new track pack the new track pack which I have a few things in there um, on the back just to bring uh, I don't know, it's just a flambeau box that I have that I keep my 3600s, 3700s in here, my rod holders. My battery does go on the back, which I have here. Am I setting that in there so folks can see what that looks like kind of stuck on? Oh, so you actually went ahead and put them extra rod holders on your battery box. I huh? did. Uh, yeah. So I have extra battery holder, uh, sorry, yeah, extra rod holders. Three more there. 
They've got their Marine Co. plugs on both sides. Um, that's about it, I guess, with the wheels on the side. The, uh, so that mount right there for the um, the sidekick or the uh, landing gear, Yep. is that a new canoe thing or is, is that something you had made? That's a, a new, new canoe? canoe yep. okay. They made them specially for the uh, Unlimited. So do me a favor. Tell me what you think overall about the new canoe unlimited you look pretty comfortable in that thing out on the water today but you know give me your thoughts on the boat um it's 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 so stable it's about a 41 inch base it is amazing i feel completely safe any condition any weather out on lake champlain i had like three foot waves hitting over and i felt safe the entire time i'm very impressed with it um and, and I mean, as you can see, I've decked it out, but it, it allows you to do exactly what you want to do. And so you have no problem just dropping the landing gear, bringing it up even a steep boat ramp, and then just sliding in the back of the truck? Yep, pretty much. I mean, it's a little bit of an effort for me. Um, I mean, with everything I have on it, it is a little heavier, but um, yeah, I reel it, cart it, pull it up to the truck, pull it in, slide, pick it up, slide it in. It's all cool. good. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for the walkthrough. Appreciate You're welcome. that. welcome. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Chad here with Kayak Bass Fishing. If you're looking to get in on the exciting sport of kayak fishing yourself, check out kayakbassfishing.com. Yeah! Boom! Oh yes! What a freaking toad. So whether you want to find out more about competitive kayak fishing and kayak fishing tournaments, or just looking to learn more to make yourself a better angler, head over to kayakbassfishing.com and join today.